Hey everybody, sometimes you configure your application to get data from one of your views from a, a resource other than your own application. And what we typically do is just try to set that thing up for to make it someone else's problem. They have to enable cores and then we don't have to understand it. But today we're going to dive a little bit deeper into cross-origin resource sharing. Let's mash on that. Hi everybody and welcome to episode number 40, that's the big 40 of ASP.NET Monsters, that's right, we are now officially over the hill. Uh, <laughs> today we're going to talk about cross-origin resource sharing, a scary term, but don't worry, James will make simple. Yeah, so usually, like, I mean... For uh, from the dawn of this concept of enabling cores, I've kind of tended to take the you know the coward's route, and when <laughs> so when someone needs my API, I just go mm, uh, enable all, and <laughs> we just turn it on, and then I make it a problem for deployment. Right? It's an ops problem at that point. We'll we'll figure that out later. Let's just let's just shut it down with the firewall or something like that. So, But I wanted to understand it better. I wanted to dive into it and, and figure things out. So basically what happens is a web browser will not allow you by default to, to using Ajax request to go and fetch data or resources from other domains. So when we try and go and fetch some JSON from an API that lives somewhere else, then we're going to see a problem. So let's have a look at that really quickly here. I'm going to just run this application that I've got. And now what I've done to kind of emulate this is I've got two applications set up. One of them is, I've just called it Web API Data Service, the other one MVC Data Service Consumer. So one of them is the data service, one of them is a data service consumer. Uh, the two projects in play, one of them is Web API, one of them is MVC. In the MVC application, I've modified the About page to go and fetch some data. So let me have a look and see if this actually showed up. It says it's ready. I'm just going to run it again and see if it pops up in a browser. There we go. So on the about page it says getting some values dot dot dot. If I hit F12 we can pull up the developer tools and see that something has happened that we didn't expect. It says XML HTTP request cannot load localhost 26 375 API slash values. It says no access control origin uh, allow origin header is present on the requested resource. So, and it's an origin and then the where we are sitting at right now, which is localhost 26556, is not or is therefore not allowed access. So this isn't something that is a problem with the web server. This is the browser saying, timeout, this web page is trying to get data from somewhere else. And I'm not gonna let it happen because I asked the server, I told it who I was and where this request was orig originating from and it didn't tell me that that was okay. So by default cores is not allowed. You are not allowed to have cross origin resource sharing on by default. The browser will block us. In our uh, footnotes here for the show I will actually include some uh, information on the origins of this policy and we can kind of dive into that further. Okay, so here, of course, I get the error. Let's have a look at what the page is trying to do. This It seems like a pretty um, straightforward thing that we might be trying to do. I have a UL, just an unordered list here with an ID of data. I try to get JSON from this local host that's uh, just got an API values. And any of the items that are in there, I just want to add them to an array that has this uh, series of list items in them and then I'm going to join them together and stuff them into the HTML, the HTML for the data element. So pretty straightforward thing, trying to load some values. I've run into this before, um, especially when you've got multiple projects in the same solution, for example. Even having a web API project that sits in the same solution as an MVC project, if you try and access those, th this is a common way of doing that. So. Um, so now I've got this get JSON method. Here we go. We're doing localhost 26375. So let me pull this up. Uh, the first thing that I'd want to do, I, I believe this is actually running right now. So let me pull up my copy of Postman. And here is API values. And I'm going to take this guy out of here for a second. And I'm going to hit send. Okay. So this is exactly what Chrome is seeing when it tries to get the list of values, okay? It says, 
um, it's doing a get on this localhost 26375 and it's coming back and saying there, there's no header here so it was looking for let me go back to Chrome access control allow origin header in the response and it was unable to find that so I'm going to put in HTTP localhost 26556 is that right uh, origin let me go back here and pull up my browser and this is where it's coming from and I'm actually gonna go in and make sure because I did have this running earlier I'm gonna go back into my um, web API I'm just gonna restart it just so we can see here that's okay. totally not the restart button Totally not, because I'm not debugging. That's right. Yeah, that's no, absolutely right. No, but it's... I think that's yeah. the browser link button. The refresh one page. Oh. Oh. Why I know, do they it's have deceptively it? they have similar. It's so like mean. so close right there to... Okay, yeah. Refresh linked browsers. Oh, right. Okay. Hashtag experts. <laughs> okay. Um, so when I request the values directly, those, those values are there. And when I go over to Postman... I'm going to put this in. I'm going to hit send. And the values are there. Um, and even... Uh, Chrome itself, when it sends in that origin header, because this is what it does when it tries to fetch the values, it expects the header back, that very particular header back called access control allow origin. And if it's not there, it doesn't allow your script access to the values. So even though I can get them from here in the browser, and even though I look at them here in Postman, when I when I specify the request, I, I don't get to use these from my script. They're not made available to me from the browser. All the all the major browser, browsers support this now. So uh, something that we have to be aware of. So we have to relax the policy. So what we're going to do is put in a policy that looks something like this. We're going to say use cross-origin resource sharing and in the options we say allow these this set of origins it's actually an array that we can pass in so we can just do a comma separated list of origins or we can pass in an array or a list or whatever and that'll open that up so this is something that we can relax the really nice thing about this is that because it comes after configure services we would already have access to things like database access so if we've got paid subscriptions or something like that where we want to relax the origins for our, for our API and open it up for people to load dynamically data from our site, we'd be able to do that on the fly. And we'd be able to pull this list of, of sites that we're going to allow, of origins that we're going to allow access to the API simply by loading that list in and passing it into our policy that we create. Okay, I'm going to restart this. Builds going, away we go, API values. Once the controller's back up and running, there we go. We're gonna pop back into Postman and we're gonna check it out. I'm, now remember the headers that came back in our response did not include any access control allow origin. However, now with cores enabled, uh, and I still don't see it, that's awesome. This is gonna be an edit point, okay. anyone see what I missed? No, I was looking at oh. something. Actually, we're going <laughs> to... You're looking at something else. Thank you for helping me. You're there welcome. is There's an exclamation mark here. Restricted HTTP headers, and you have to use a plugin called Interceptor for Postman. I'm so glad that I ran into that on purpose. It allows me to easily demonstrate it. Okay, I can turn on intercept, Interceptor, and that allows us to rewrite the request on the fly. Okay. Now I'm going to hit send again, and there it is. Access control allow origin. Our expected header is in our response. So now, when I go back to this page, and I'll hit F12, we remember that we had that problem, this XML HTTP request. When I refresh the page, value one, value two, and I do not get the error for the XML HTTP request. Oh, that's nice. This is so oh. much better than JSONP. Right. Which is kind of the previous 
incarnation of weirdness that you had used for this kind of thing. Right. Where you either had to post or uh, allow get yeah, explicitly. You, yeah, it was like this like special format of JSON that you would get back that contained like the values and then the name of a callback inside your JavaScript to execute with those values. Mm -hmm. It was really weird. Right. Okay, so a couple of other options. Right now, this is uh, pretty narrowed down. Uh, what I would uh, have previously tended to do would have been something like this, app.usecores, and I might do options. Allow any origin, and then just kind of leave it wide open. That's probably not a great idea. We probably want to limit who has well, I mean, access to it. There are that. legitimate use cases for that. Like if you sure. are Twitter, then and you want people to just be able to use your API, then it makes kind of sense to to open that up wide to everyone. Right. Well, okay. If if you're Twitter from like five years ago when Twitter was still cool. And, <laughs> and it was still open. The developers, and throttle yeah, and, the developers yeah. access and all of that stuff. <laughs> the other thing is, is that this is chainable. So if we want to, you know, explicitly state which methods or which origins are allowed, then we could actually do that as well. So this is going to be for get. And again, it's a comma separated list, so I could add others there if I wanted to. And I could do... Uh, with headers and then say that we're expecting a specific header in there as well. Maybe we've got a custom policy that we want to implement. But for the most part, we can just go with what we got right there. And that should take care of allowing us to access our data from a different origin. Now, in in the older versions like Web API 2, we did this by doing like config.enable cores. And then they had uh, there's an enable cores uh, attribute that you could put on your controller, so you could do you could enable certain origins for specific controllers. Is there something similar in, in this there, version? There actually is, and I should probably maybe we can do up an advanced uh, session on cores because we've got attributes. Yeah. We can actually set up policies and then use those policies in the attributes on specific methods. So you, right now, I'm opening up like you're absolutely right. This right now is enabling cores on everything below this in our pipeline. So any of our yeah. controllers are now going to allow this. But we can probably have another look and just another short video on how to do you know policy and how to do uh, attribute-based cores allowing. And <laughs> uh, maybe we'll come up with a more elegant way of saying that for the uh, the episode when we record that. But yeah, a great next step in exploring the use of cores. Excellent. All right, great. Well, thanks everybody for coming out and listening to our Over the Hill episode. And we <laughs> hope to see you next week, next episode, where we continue our decline into old age. <laughs> Great. Thanks, everyone. Cheers. Positive. Bye. Oh. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Cheers.